Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Liverpool Perspective. This is episode 19. Hey, what a crazy week this has been. And we have we have a guest and, and to help us get through this. And we also have, his name is Alex, a United fan. And, the, and of course, this week we also have Dylan. Hello, guys. I'm back. And, yeah, it's been a crazy week. We had a postponed game. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Man United Liverpool will talk about not many like not a lot of games, but the games that happened were just like yeah, were pretty ridiculous. There's stuff to discuss definitely for sure, and also with a cup with Champions League games and a lot of crazy mm-hmm. things going on and right now. The English uh, league again proves it's the best league in the world. Yep. Yeah, I mean, all English finals for mm-hmm. both competitions. Again, I mean, except exactly. except one team, except one team. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, also you're right. Yeah, we have like a team there. that likes to bottle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, I, I had it in my head because I really wanted Arsenal to win that game because I would like to beat them for the final. But now we have to play Villarreal. Mm. So might be kind of tough, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get your reaction to that. Of course. Actually, what's your reaction to that? Actually, before we get to... What's your reaction to the final? To the final? Well, to the final, yeah. No, um, I think we'll actually have a, actually have a good shot at it. But of course, you know, I've been hearing Unai Emery, and he's so good in the in the Europa League. Um, uh, but today we played um Villa, and Maguire. I think he might actually be. There's a good chance that he's injured for the final. Mm-hmm. So that's that's that would actually be a major blow for us. I. I think I don't know. Um, I think Bayi can actually substitute for him like decently for the final, but because the final at the end of the day, it's it's, it's who comes out on the day. Um, mm-hmm. It's not always about like on paper and stuff. So it's about the match on the day. So we'll see. But Maguire has played so many minutes for us. It's gonna be kind of weird because yeah. you know it's not gonna be the same team. I'm yeah. sorry, but at the beginning of the season, beginning of the podcast, me and uh. Josh, we're joking about how Arsenal State was, and now they have they're the ones getting a, that have a good shot of the trophy, and not us. <laughs> yeah. exactly. uh, I mean, now they have no shot for a trophy, so there you go. No shot, yeah, yeah. So they're they're done. They're done. They're still well, they, in tenth place. They, well, yeah, they were, but they got farther than us at least getting the trophy. Yeah. yeah. Nobody would think that Arsenal would get further than Liverpool in any. I mean, they had to beat Slavia Prague. We had to beat Real Madrid. So that there's yeah, a yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Arsenal bottled it, and I don't think they'll take any. Um, they'll take any. Um, uh, what's the word? They'll. They won't take really any. They won't be happy about about getting further than us in the competition, and they can't win. And they couldn't win the trophy. They need to win. No, um, yeah, um, but I, I mean, like. I'm very upset that I, but Manchester United's probably gonna win this. Yeah, I think United will win this unless Unai Emery's Europa League craziness keeps happening. But put it this way, yeah, it's ours to win. It's ours to win at this point. Yeah, I think. So, but I think Unai I can easily United show us. We are the favorites for this game, and rightly so. Yeah. I think even in, even in the Real, Villarreal Arsenal game, I thought Villarreal weren't that good either. So they weren't that good. No, that game was actually really like. It's really shit. Arsenal could have actually won that game. Yeah. It's just they, they just they didn't care. There's no way. Because I remember one time, like in the fucking 88th minute. <laughs> oh, can, am I allowed to curse? By the way. Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. We have a <laughs> okay. Um, in the 88th minute, Martinelli, like he gets the ball and he just kicks it up into the sky. I'm like, bro, there's actually no way you want to win this match. Like it's the 88th minute. You have to keep possession, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just Arsenal this season. They just they've let they've let their fans down, and I think it's a lot of the um, a lot of the fault comes on the shoulders of the players. I just think the discipline hasn't been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, well do, I mean, I do think United will will win the final. Yeah, I think you. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I just don't like to talk about yeah. that. But I mean, at yeah, least I like uh, that hopefully you and I memory memory masterclass. But let's get into. Let's get Liverpool, into, uh, main, the, the main meat of the podcast. Of course, of course, of course. One two nil against Southampton, and this comes with all the re- results that we'll talk about. We'll talk about after this. Uh, we needed to win this game. This is our last game at Anfield without any fans, and mm-hmm. we had to. We had to end because we're we're playing our our last home game 
our next and last home game is in Crystal Palace on the final mm-hmm. day. It will have we'll have ten thousand fans in the stadium. That will be huge for us. So we've been struggling a lot with our fans at Anfield this year, and this is a massive game we need to win. Especially since like I think Southampton had like the eighteenth worst away record. Away record yeah. So. So and we- I'm gonna be honest. Even though it's two 0 like it sounds like, in, like we kind of put it away in the books, but it was still I was on my the edge of my seat for most of the game, especially with that stat that you show that uh Allison with all the saves like uh, Liverpool ne- like they were at one nothing, but they never put the game away. Oh really? How was yeah, the I mean, game, let me like, clarify the stat. Let me clarify the stat that Dylan is talking about that like the, Allison ba- had made six saves for Liverpool tonight. I mean, jeez. Last night we we're recording on Sunday, so and this oh, is the first yeah. we made in the Premier League game, and the last Liverpool goalkeeper to make as many saves in the league while also keeping a clean sheet was Pepe Riena against Wigan on oh, my. Towards, on 20, 2013. So this is when we were like, this is when we were like crap. Yeah, we were like actually crap, and it was oh, he also saved six shots. I'm never comfortable with putting away a lead like until. Finally, Thiago scored, but like that didn't come long enough. But uh, really, it was I was just not comfortable with that one nothing league. Wait, Thiago time. scored. He scored against. Yeah, in the nineties. Yeah. Oh my! Was is that his first goal for Liverpool? Yeah, yeah it was actually goal. a nice goal. It was really nice. That's goal. Nice good. Goal. That's good stuff. Well, Alex, what were you gonna say before before I interrupted you? My short term memory is so bad. You have to remember for me, bro. Like I really don't even know what oh. I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me kind of say my thoughts in this game because honestly, I'll yeah. be honest, after, especially after the Chelsea game we'll talk about later, I, I wasn't motivated for this game. I felt, mm-hmm. I mean, there there's not much to be excited about at the moment. Like, it just feels like we're going to create so many chances. I wasn't optimistic heading into this game. Obviously, we didn't preview the game, this game, but, but I didn't feel... I honestly didn't feel confident. I thought maybe it would scrape a win, but I, I don't know. Like, it just felt like here we go again. Especially we got one, we got one, one nil up, a huge goal, beauty, a beauty cross from Salah. Mane scored. Like, when does Mane score? Like, <laughs> at home, especially at home. So that was a that was a big rarity. But again, it just felt like Newcastle vibes again. Just one nil up. Um, Newcastle, Wasn't... we're not finished. Our chances, we when we had chances like Salas, like Salah went around the keeper, and then I don't know how he, like, and then my literally my stream paused after Salah was dribbling around the keeper, and I'm like, he's gonna miss this. I already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I reload the stream. It's still one nil. Of course, surprise, surprise. So we had chances like that. Jota had a few chances as well. It, we didn't have as many chances Newcastle, nor did we play as well as against Newcastle, but it just felt a similar, similar vibe. It just felt that de- defensively we were shaky, and it just it, it just felt like the same thing again mm-hmm. and again, and just felt like Southampton may get an equalizer. But thank that, you. Yep, that's what I was feeling the entire we time. Got, we got the second goal with Thiago, but. Yeah. What's going on with you guys, you think, though? Like, is it, is it, it's not, it can't just be the lack of Van Dyke. Oh, yeah, you have a lot of center back injuries, too, as well. Is it the mm-hmm. injuries you, you think? Injuries, yeah. just general. We had a pretty tough schedule earlier in the year. Oh, yeah. Um, we were, yeah, I feel like just COVID in general just like took a toll on a lot of our players. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Mane, Mane the was the. F- Fifth best player in the Ballon d'Or like two years ago, and yeah. now he's nowhere to be found. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. He's black. Speaking of injuries, speaking of injuries in this game, the injuries made were, were even worse. Like the lineup, when I saw that lineup, my if I had any confidence heading into this game, I had zero confidence because well, it's good I that we saw won it, Reese Williams in the starting eleven. <laughs> oh no. Reese Williams, and I'm like, here we go again. And I was right to say, here we go again, because Southampton got through us so many times. Like, they are able to outrun us, especially, I think, Walkout is on the right. I think that was the chance with Allison. Mm-hmm. But thankfully for us, Shea Adams and, and um, Redwood 
were playing and not Danny Ings because yeah, Danny, Danny Ings, Ings would have really good. outpaced. That was the only thing that made me kind of confident heading into the game because I wouldn't I wouldn't have been confident if <laughs> I wouldn't have been confident <laughs> otherwise. Like if there's they had a good striker, and I think that's why Alex was able to make the saves that he needed to because Southampton didn't have any clinical players on the pitch. Thankfully for us. Yeah, and, and if, I mean, like, if there's any side to put this, but like team we put out against, it was like this Southampton side now because yeah. they weren't they weren't at four hundred percent either. So yeah, they weren't in good, and they're not in good form either. Like, and no, their form is just atrocious. They're like in relegation form with their away form. Yeah, this is the best time for you guys to play Southampton this season. I feel um. Because they had some really great matches this season. They were they were mm-hmm. doing well in the beginning of the season. I mean, mind you, they were doing well while a lot of other teams were doing badly as well. But it's kind of, you know, stabilized now. Yeah. Well, yeah. But thankful, thankfully, we did win. We won this game. We we also have some other injuries that that have happened. Be heading into this game with Milner out. I I, I oh. didn't say why Rhys Williams played because Kabak was out. Davis is out, even though he never plays. I don't know where he is. Oh, suddenly he's out. <laughs> like it just. Uh, who else? Was, who else was out? Oh, Kieta, surprise, surprise. Uh, who else? I'm so I don't even know anymore. But yeah, well, at least we won. We won. We won the game, and this is the first win we had against a team in 14th to 19th position this year. So, wow, wow. Amazing, amazing uh, stuff! Amazing stuff. <laughs> we, we did it. It took until May eighth. <laughs> that's incredible. That's, that's actually it's mad. the biggest achievement we had this year, and of course it wasn't a convincing one, but we, we got the job done. Hey, they don't need to know that, bro. They see two nil. The, the the people on on Twitter and everybody they see two nil and they're not gonna look into the game too much, you know. Like that, you're, you're chilling right now. So yeah, you're chilling. But the good thing about this game, which kind of gives me optimism for the next few games, yeah, uh, is that we were able to win despite not playing goal, which has not happened mm-hmm. a lot this year. Usually, we always pay for our, like our mistakes. Yeah, it always comes around to like when we're not clinical. I always feel like the games where we're missing like 15, 20 shots a game. Those are the games where we lose one nothing because of a stupid deflection or some like, like penalty. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so. If this was the game where I feel like our mistakes didn't come back to bite us, but you can't always count on that. We still need to play better. Yeah, I mean, who do you think was man of the match in the game? Um, this uh, I'm not. Sh- there's a lot. Like, who do you think? I don't know. Everyone's saying Allison. I'm kind of edging towards yeah. that because he made six saves. Yeah, that is true. But I don't know. Like, the only thing that gives me kind of hesitation is that, remember his misplaced pass mm-hmm. to, like, Shea Adams, I think it was? Like, he mm-hmm. did. He basically did He basically did. A, he did a Liverpool versus Man City mistake again. Yeah, but you got, he still kept the clean sheet, though. He still got the fair. job done, but if he... Yeah. It's still if, if Usually, Allison is like players, they would have scored like Man City do. They would have scored that. So mm-hmm. he was mad in the match, but there wasn't really much to say. I think if I thought Trent was decent, was quite decent to the, in the game. I think Trent is is, pro, is trying is proving. I think he's Trent's performance is as a late. I think he he got Liverpool Player of the Month um last in April, and that and this is right after Southgate um omitted him from the squad from the England squad. So I think it definitely shows his character. And stuff mm-hmm. like I think it shows a lot about him, to be honest. Ooh. Yeah, that really does because a lot of footballers will just go stagnant like after that. They, I mean, they wouldn't like. Obviously, you can't quit the sport, but like it does. It definitely does show something for you to just go and try harder after a snub like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, but yeah, what would you say, Dylan? Allison man of the match. Yeah, it's uh, um yeah. Yeah, and if you Thiago to... did play decent. Besides the goal, he was. Yeah, Thiago is good. Thiago is good. He had a definitely good performance, and I think it was a well deserved goal for Thiago. Mm-hmm. And another thing, I actually saw. There's one more thing about Liverpool this year. I think that this is one of the main things we were. Remember, we were talking about how we weren't getting goals from from enough players besides Salah. Mm-hmm. We were like highlighting that. Well, like James Pierce was highlighting 
the contributions from the midfield. Yeah. This article in the Athletic, and he and apparently the midfield right now has four had like the midfield. Our midfield this year we include Thiago's goal, which wasn't counted in there, is five goals and four assists. That's good. That's last year. You know what? You know what was last what was year? That? The league? What was it? Probably like twenty goals and fifteen. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's oh, that's literally that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's unexcusable. That's, a, that's like a that's thirty. What is it? Can I do? Can I do the math? 20, 20 plus 15, 35 goal contributions versus not. Nine goal contributions. That's a twenty-three. That's that's like a twenty-two goal goal contribution difference. That's twenty-two goals. Twenty-two. Can you that's season that changing. Yeah. Goals this year. That's yeah. Uh, oh. That's definitely season changing. Not yeah. You guys have definitely been like, and especially because the, the front three has no confidence for you guys, I feel, at this point. Like, they, yeah. like mm-hmm. even when they lose the ball or something, they're not, they're not free because the front three, what you want to do, everybody behind them has to be so consistent so that they're free to just, you know, do their thing. But now they're not really free to do their thing because, you know, if they miss and stuff, the midfield might be lacking and the defense might be lacking. Like, the whole team is just, you know, all these insecurities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So... Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. So let's move to the other fixtures. I guess ju- literally just now, West the West Ham Everton game just finished. And Did they, will Everton win? And Everton won 1 0. So that's oh, a huge no. game for us. Mm. Dylan, you said yeah. that you, you were watching the game earlier. What did yeah. you the game? I, um, I watched the very beginning and then just the part after they scored. Um, Overall, Everton did look more a bit in control, but it was still was back and forth. I mean, but from what I saw, uh, it, was, it looked like it was Everton's game to mm-hmm. lose part of it because they did look like they were actually playing like from the beginning. From that, like they were just playing at a higher like the first I saw like the first five ten minutes, and they were outpacing uh, yeah. West Ham for a bit. But then I didn't see the goal, but um, I'm guessing. West Ham, they just played better, but I mean, um, I didn't see most of the game. So, mm, like, it okay. could have been a good, no, West I, Ham I, could have tried. Like, it's not if it Everton didn't put on obviously convincing uh, performance. It's one nothing. So, I'm pretty sure West Ham probably put up a fight. But well, okay. So I watched a little. I watched like the as the podcast started. I kind of t- mm-hmm. I decided to turn on the game to just like go along while we're talking. But I didn't really see much from West Ham. To be honest, I thought it was like. So nothing, nothing last 15 minutes, uh, but they have a few set pieces for West Ham. But and I think and the stats kind of show that Everton were able to hold West Ham overall. Like West Ham had zero shots on target. So. Oh, they had zero. Well, yeah, they can't win the game. If they have no they can't shots win the game. Target, so they had 11 yeah. shots in total, which is more than Everton's, but they had zero in tar- on target. So that's they all. Just, they just didn't have a clinical day. They, just didn't, they, were yeah, they didn't have a good day. Lingard didn't have a good day. Antonio didn't have a good day. So, yeah, but it's, it's a big, a big result for a big result for us, especially West Ham lost. Their, West Ham have the second best home record in the league. So yeah. it's a pretty uh, big deal. That is good. Well, how is how is um how's Europe looking for you guys next year at the season? Where are you guys in the table compared to like West Ham and here and the people well, around you? Right now we're we have fifty seven points. Uh-huh. West Ham have fifty eight points. So fifth oh, place. That's close. That's and we have a game in hand against. We play against you guys, so we could get ahead of West Ham and basically, yeah. Base and Leicester also lost four two to Newcastle. Which is, oh, anyone see stuff. that game? Um, I didn't no. actually. I I kind of saw like we were kind of. Tur- I was doing work. I was kind of turning the game on and off, uh, like, like I kind of had like the commentary on, but I was doing work. And then when I heard there was a goal, I kind of turned looked at the screen and saw the goals. Like literally, Leicester were just making so many mistakes, and Newcastle just yeah. had, like they just had the counter attack. But yeah, that was a big that was a big result overall. Of course, that was a crazy result. And now, because of that, we have we're six points behind Leicester, and we have a game in hand against United. But if we yeah, look at no. Le- if we look at Leicester's fixtures. They play Man United. They have the FA Cup final against Chelsea. Then they play Chelsea on t- on the Tuesday, 
and then they play Tottenham at home. Yeah. Leicester you guys are play- if Leicester drop two of those and we what are our next fixtures? So the thing this is the this is the thing. So Leicester have six, 63 points. So I think I think the only game Oh, are- we yeah, uh, we play United, don't we? Yeah. No, but you guys I mean, have a good chance I, against us, I feel. Wait, this but but Leicester have so this is like my calculate my cal- calculations at the moment. So Leicester well, I'm assuming that they'll only the only game they'll win, I think, is against Spurs, because mm. right now Spurs are a shambles, as we'll talk about yeah. in a, in a little bit. And Spurs. as we talked about a lot this year, the Tottenham right now are not in a good position, of course. Uh, but so I'm assuming Leicester will be Tottenham, but I don't think Leicester will beat Man United, nor will they beat Chelsea, because I think those two teams are too good for Leicester, especially away from home. Leicester away from home, I'm not sure how. I mean, I don't think they'll do anything away from home, even though their away record's better than their home record, actually. So, but yeah, so I, I, I don't, so I think Leicester at max could get a win against Spurs. And even then, you never know what Spurs, what Spurs turns up at the end of the day. Oh, so yeah. let's say, let's say what Leicester do have 66 points. We would, we would then need to just, we would be only nine, we would be only nine points off that 66 points. And our goal difference only plus two is only a plus two difference. So we could easily, if Leicester lose their games, we'll overcome that. So I think we need to win three of the four games. So we could lose the May United game, but if we win the next three games, which is Burnley, West Brom away, both away games, and Crystal Palace at home with 10,000 fans, I think we win those three games, we can make top four. We've seen crazier things happen in the last few match weeks. Yeah. So I'm, basically what I'm saying is that we don't need to beat May United this weekend. I mean, yeah. on Thursday, in order to I'm make close, it. even though Actually, you don't need to, even a draw, a draw and a Leicester loss would help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all. That's what I'm trying to say, basically, with that, with that whole spiel I just said. Yeah. We, we'll need to beat May United as, as much as what people are saying. We, this is a cru- the most important game of the season. It really isn't, which kind of comforts me because I'm not confident heading into the May United game, as we'll kind of, as you heard me say last last episode. Um, but and, and we'll talk about a little bit that a little bit more. But yeah, but there there are a few results here that there are not, there is another good result leads three one against Spurs. Did anyone any of you guys see the game? I didn't see it, but no. I didn't see it. When was that? That was when. Yeah, that was yesterday at seven thirty. Oh. I'm guessing um, Tottenham only plays two ways. They either play, field eleven men or field none, and they field the none this game. I'm guessing. Yeah. That's an accurate description of Spurs. And I heard that I heard that Tottenham had the offside goal that was counted for some bullshit again. Of course. Uh, you know, you know the offside bullshit we talked about. Dill, we mean you talked about that. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Ago, a few episodes ago. So I don't remember when they talked about. It. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I don't. Whatever. I don't remember. I think it was two or three episodes ago. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was against Villa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was the crazy Super League episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was kind of an insane thing as well. But it, it could have been two one Spurs. That could, the game couldn't change. But Leeds, Leeds are a good team. So I'm not surprised that Spurs lost to them. But, I'm not surprised Spurs lose. I'm not really surprised when Spurs loses to anybody. To be fair, like yeah, I mean, I mean Spurs fair. do have eleven <laughs> losses this year, so it. You could definitely bet on Spurs losing. Yeah, like it's so simple. You have a, what's the, what's the percent the, the chances of you predicting a Spurs loss if you do eleven divided by thirty five? You have a thirty one percent chance. Yeah, and that's that's pretty decent. Yeah, Especially I mean, that, for I a can't really laugh 16. about that because our club have nine losses this year. No, nah, but you guys are chilling. You guys just you guys just peak. To like last or like last year or two years ago, like you guys, like, yeah, at least we're in you the, guys have a our well, lose rate is 26 percent, Spurs. So, yeah, yeah we're more like we're less likely to do, lose than you, even though we're, exactly. we're we have a bunch of injuries and we're, and we're not doing well at the moment. Exactly, and you guys, you're and in a still, rough state, so That's what Spurs is. exactly. You're in a rough state, you're in a rough patch, you have a lot going on. Spurs is just Spurs, it's yeah, they're just it's Spurs, yeah. Spurs and Arsenal kind of swap places, yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Ars- I mean that Le- that Leeds game was actually bad for Arsenal because now Leeds are ahead of Arsenal. 
Where's Arsenal, Arsenal now? Are they below ten? Oh, they're still in ten. Uh, yeah, because you because you guys, because you guys beat Villa. But before we get there, would you guys think Tottenham have any chance to get to? I mean, they're seventh place. Do you think they can at least get uh, Europa League or even get Ooh, top four? Arsenal? Tottenham. Oh, Tottenham? No, they can't get. I mean, maybe uh, where are they in the league? Let's see. They're in seventh. Seventh? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, it depends Behind, on. They're behind West Ham and Liverpool and Leicester. I don't think they will I mean, because if we want to get into the uh, Champions League, say we get in Leicester drops, I don't see Tottenham getting in if Le- Leicester drops. And then I'd see Leicester being in the Europa League. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm yeah. looking at West Ham's next three games. How, how many? How many? Oh, we just need to win our game. I mean, West Ham, I think West Ham will drop points this year in, in the next few games. I think, I mean, Brighton, they may drop points. West Brom, I think they'll be fine. And, and Southampton, I think they'll be fine. So I think they'll win like two of, their, two of their next three, in my opinion, which would not be enough, which I think if, if they win six, I don't think that would be enough for them to make top four, to be honest. But uh, I mean, what do you think? West, West Ham are also in the top four contention so, and Europa League contention. They're, whatever, they're all over the place. But mm-hmm. what do you think will happen? They have Brighton away, West Brom away, and Southampton at home. West Ham? Yeah. If my prediction, if I wanted anything to happen, it's probably going to be Man City, Man United, um, Chelsea, us, Leicester, West Ham. Mm. That's like the safest, I'd think. Uh, if you're, yeah. if you're I don't know. It's going to be into the Champions about. League. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because West Ham have three games, the winnable games, to be honest. Brighton away. West Brom away and Southampton at home. So I don't know. But it's West Ham and Bright I mean, looking at Brighton, Brighton are a good team. So I see like I like a okay. one, uh, for example. Wait, how does the Champions League qualifying go this season? Like what which places are it? Because it's two top English. four. Top four. It's top four. So all four get Champions League. Now this the fourth place isn't no like play, a qualifying there's no playoffs game. anymore, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, that's nice, um, though. I think West Ham will. Best I think West Ham could get six wins at its best. But if they if they win all three games, they like us. If they win all three games, I think they can make top four. Well, no, this is a very nice end to the like. For yeah, the because Champions West Ham have three winnable games. If they win all three games, they are also be in the top four. So there's a lot up against this whole. I thing. don't want Price. West Ham to get yeah. Champions League football. I'd like them to get Europa League football. So that. United have like a kind of, you know, we can talk to Declan Rice and say, hey, we have, we have Champions League yeah, yeah. football. You oh, so you can get him. Yeah, I see. I yeah. See. Yeah. But I mean, Spur, I'm looking at Spurs' fixtures right now. I think that, I think they'll definitely be in seventh or eighth. Like, no. uh, they're playing Wolves at home, Villa at home, and Leicester away. Oh, Spurs are losing two all to, they're not getting, they're not winning. They're only winning one of those games. Yeah. I think they're only winning like, one I, of those I, games. So, yeah, I only feel that. Ryan Mason, who is he, bro? Like, I just, every, time, every time I look at this guy, like, he, I, I feel so bad for him. Like, he got put in a final. Um, like, like that is that his first managerial match ever? Like, or did they play before? I'm not sure. Yeah. But I just feel so bad for the guy. Like, he's, I mean, yeah, he's getting his paycheck and stuff, but there's just, it just seems like his role is so pointless. Like, I, I just doubt Tottenham can be saved by just a bloke like him. I mean, although he's an interim. But some yeah, people say they I, might I they, they might keep him. Some people say they might they keep him. They keep him, that'll be that'll be screwed up. But what do you guys think? And what do you guys think with Everton? Do you think they can make the do you think they can get ahead of us if we don't win our games and make the Europa League? Because they have they have they have they're only point, they're only two points behind us and they play Villa away and they have actually with Everton, they they have the third best away record in the league, but yeah. they have like the they have a terrible home record. Like if yeah, they do. this is literally uh fifteenth place. Everton uh, should have done better this season, I feel. Ancelotti's algorithm didn't really it failed a lot of test cases this 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 I mean this their away season. form is working, but their their home game formula is not working at all. So yeah, I think it's definitely a COVID thing. Just like they're just I I, I really feel like next season they'll be banging. Richarlison, mm-hmm. Dolph, like they have this summer to work yeah, they on have whatever a couple they, injuries they missed out on this talking- season. I was talking to one of wait, my bad, my bad, Alex. Go on. No, no, no. Continue, bro. You too. Okay. No, but like I was talking to an Everton fan. Uh he was on our podcast before, Obi Obi. He was on our podcast. He was like he was saying how 
they he was saying how we had they had so many injuries like Hamas keeps getting injured on and off and Dinier being injured it's kind of like unsettling the team a little bit especially Hamas being out because Hamas mm-hmm. they're basically evolving their play around him so it's been a tough season for Everton so we'll see what happens exactly. next year. But right now they have, I mean, their last yeah. four fixtures are Villa away, Sheffield at home, Wolves at home, and Man City away. So, I, I mean, we're giving their away form. I think they could definitely beat Villa. And they could, and I think Sheffield or Sheffield, they could beat Sheffield. But yeah, And you never know within these last games. Like, you never know what can happen. Yeah. Like, you, Ancelotti, he's, you have to understand that this guy is, like, one of the greatest managers of all time. I wouldn't be surprised if he went and just won all the rest of his games. Yeah, like he, he could definitely I'll get. A, some... I mean, Man City away. I think Everton can get definitely get a point out of that because yeah, they, they could. So, Honestly, they have nothing to play for. The Champions League final yeah. coming soon. So I want I Man City. Know, still, everything's up for grabs. To be honest, I but, don't know. Do you think United has a like any chance of winning the title? No chance whatsoever. No chance. I don't think. <laughs> no chance. No, no way. Chance. Dylan, but, how about you? Might, but. It has been delayed. Who is City playing? Week. It has been delayed for another week. Wait, what yeah. are we going to say, Dylan? Who is City, City playing? playing? Who is City playing? I don't even... Who cares? Shitty. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about who City are playing. I don't, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I just don't care who Man City are playing. Season, I, all I care about, the title I cared about is that we keep Man City to win today. I mean, yesterday against Chelsea. And they bottled it. Oh, I'm so happy. bottled it. Manchester City is always like... United, United's title hopes are still alive. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was so happy when Chelsea scored that, when they actually beat that. I mean, honestly, because I don't want Chelsea to, I still don't want them to, like, catch up because, you know, we still have to keep up our performance in the league technically, mathematically and everything. But I like, I like the, I like the game. I like the game. You took off all possible points off of Man City. Like, it really does set us up. Like, you know, we could try, but no, Pep has this one. Pep Pep has it. Talk about this. This did any of you watch the game? Oh, I watched that game. Yeah, <laughs> which one? <laughs> the Chelsea, Chelsea City watched. game. I, I barely oh, watched the City. game. I literally, I, I literally went to Stern and I saw, I saw a, a very happy Chelsea fan, hmm. and I was, I was, I saw, I thought it was still one one. It was like ninetieth minute. No, and that's apparently I, when I came in the room, it was when when he was already. You see person. this. Josh? And I, I was like, you I, see this, I was Josh? Really saying piss off the whole time. I was saying piss off, and then I, and then I touched him, and I saw the score. I'm like, I had, other, I had other words to say after that, but yeah, I mean, City did bottle it, didn't they? Didn't they, 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 they use that they bottled it, bottle and they they did that their best. I mean, they, get the ribbons out, get the ribbons out. We're 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 we're, yeah. we're going for it. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have an empty bottle right here for them. <laughs> Now you're in the now you're in the full like full one like you have Dylan, but it's just an empty bottle. As Liverpool, Liverpool fans, model. as Liverpool I mean, did fans, you that, did see that Guerrero penalty? That's what I was. That so that bad. little city would have won it. Like they could have if their city was up two nothing. I don't think Chelsea would have come back from that. No, no they but wouldn't have. the fact that Aguero just like took the penenka with like. Like, there's very certain situations you take a Penenka and not in the 45th minute, I wouldn't think. Not, yeah, 45th Maybe minute. if you got one less. score at the time, 1-0. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you can't but... be doing that. I mean, but, I'm not, but Aguero, you have to realize it from Aguero's context as well. This guy doesn't care. He's a Premier League legend already. He can yeah. leave the league right now and he's, he's chilling. But, um, yeah. He so did he, apologize. He's, he's really he showed remorse. Time. Of course, you have to apologize yeah. nonetheless because, yeah. like, there's still fans that, you know, want to be see pissed. you win the game. And, like, if you lose this title, bro, like... Uh, I mean, lose, oh, it's going to be... This is, if they lose this title, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be worse than a Gerard slip. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's actually bad. really bad. Mm-hmm. No, is it worse than a Gerard slip, bro? No, if they, if they bottle it. it. If they bottle it. If they bottle it. I mean, okay, it, now if we're talking about bottling the league. Dylan, you'll now get who Man City have to play. They play Newcastle away. They play Brighton away and Everton at home. They can bottle it. They can really bottle it. They though. can. If they can if they bottle The two this, away games aren't given and Everton if we could always pull out a surprise, but they're gonna beat Newcastle, yeah. but Brighton bro, I mean, that's are you kidding me? <laughs> are you <laughs> kidding me? Brighton, bro? Like... Newca- if they beat Newcastle, that's it. 
Really? They win yeah, the they, they, they need one win. They're one win away. Oh, fuck that then. No, they're winning. They're winning. <laughs> <laughs> so they lose all three of their games. Actually, wait, can they even get... How many points can United get possibly? United could get... If they win all their games, which is very unlikely. Yeah, we're not beating Liverpool. I'm telling points. you from now. 82 points. They get 82 man. points. 82 points. So that means... 82 points at the end of the season, bro. This has been such a bad season. If you win all four games... Yeah. It's a big if. Because you have a lot of games coming up right now. So if you do that, that means Man City could only aff- you can only afford Man City to draw once. Actually, you could afford them to draw twice. Actually, no, once, because their goal difference is way too good for you. Unless you win games 5 0 now, but yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you only you can only afford them to draw once. So let's say they draw against Everton, mm-hmm. for example. You need them to mm-hmm. lose against Newcastle and Brighton. Jeez, it's not happening. Yeah, it's nice to think about. No, but like, they, we'll see, they somehow we'll see battle happens. it. I think it is worse than the Jordan slip by far. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, they, it would be because for a team effort for sure. Because they had that insane unbeaten streak, bro. Like, no, they had that insane. Not even unbeaten. It was a winning streak, as in they didn't draw or anything. They won like what twenty six games or something in a row. Bro, about it was. Man City, no, I'm talking about they oh, bottle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be so bad because they actually did play really well this season. This is one of their their good seasons in the they, league. The, the thing that's holding them back is their early uh, September performance. Yeah, exactly. I remember. Yeah, even United started off shit in September. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it was so bad. Like, I, I'm surprised that we we stayed in second for the majority of the season for like for such a long time. Yeah. Okay, so I have, I have two questions from the Man City Chelsea game. So one yeah. question I have, basically we had a guest on this podcast. I don't think Dylan, you were here for this. We had a Real Madrid fan, Armand, and oh, he yeah. was basically saying he was basically saying this is the best Man City team ever. But no, so obviously now they made the Champions League final. He he kind of has a point about it. That's kind of true. And that kind of so that gives me a few more questions from that. But I think I mean, let's answer almost, the first question. What Man City is compared to other teams they had this like central. every Manchester City team that has won the league, I think, besides maybe the earliest, the recent Manchester City teams that have won the league and this year have been considerably better than I'd say our team that won like the Champions League. So yeah, I don't really sure. say that if you're in the Champions League final, it doesn't really matter that like like, you could just be in good form at that moment. Like, you could play, like, shit in, like, the early group stage, decent in the later group stage, get that second spot, and then ha- go on a run until you're yeah. in the final. Yeah, I agree with him. I think league performance is really indicative of true performance. Like, because Champions League, it's on a night. It can it's, happen, it's, right? Yeah, it's anything that happens on the night. And especially with Pep's thing with the quarterfinal jinx, like, that's low-key a thing, bro. Like, the whole like all the the mind games and stuff like it's it's much more complex in tournament football. If you want to track actual like best team and stuff, you have to take you can't just take like the fact that you know they got well in the Champions League. I mean, yeah, no, you have to you have to consider the Champions League, yeah. But like as a standalone fact, yeah, you can't really. Yeah, use, like, I, I do uh, think I, I think even Pep says it himself. Like he says, yeah. the form is more indicative. And in the league for a few years ago, they got a hundred points. Exactly. So we got 99 points. And how did they yeah, finish in the Champions League that, that season? That kind of shows more of where the, the teams were, are. How did they finish in the Champions League that season, the, the century season? They got to the quarterfinals. And they yeah, lost see, the, the quarterfinal game. Spurs, and they lost to us. And, and even that, even that. that even that was bullshit. That Remember even, the Sterling that was bullshit. <laughs> that was That was shit. Like, that was one of the, no, first of all, that's, that Champions League final with Spurs and Liverpool, that was one of the worst Champions League finals I've yeah. ever watched. Like, I'm not even going to lie. But yeah. that just proves that you can't use the Champions League as, 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 um, as the bar for, like, you know, comparing teams because they literally got knocked out off of that, that bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, and we, even, even that year when we won the league, we were just heading bad for, into bad form ahead of the Letico game. And, we, we, and Letico, obviously, a team you never know what could happen. In, yeah. we lost to them uh and we could even say man city with their 100 point season act their actual the actual 100 point season 
they in, they lost to us, remember, in three, mm-hmm. like, three nil and two one. And but that was a game Liverpool were in good form. They were already getting some confidence with Klopp. Could, that was the beginning you know, of that like, was the we were, traction. We were, yeah. we were we were already bound to be competing with Man City at that point. I think like. Yeah, that's when we were putting it together. That, was that the, when we went to Real Madrid against Real Madrid? In the yeah, final? yeah, yeah. That was that year. And I, I thought we we definitely showed that we deserved to be in it. But yeah, and then then the other question, the other question that kind of comes to my mind as well was with that fact with Man City making the finals and and Chelsea also made the finals after dominating Real Madrid completely. Like, do you think the quality of, of like the quality of football kind of is lower now, or do you think it's just because of COVID that and like you know COVID and unpredictability of the Champions League? Um, I think COVID. I've said this before. Alex, you can agree with me. Manchester City is the best team in the world equipped to fight COVID. Easily. No, of course, yeah. of course. They've they, like they literally their bench could win a Champions the, League if they tried. The depth that they have, <laughs> like the squad depth, is insane. Like. Mm-hmm. Even when they were playing Chelsea yesterday, I just saw Nathan Ake playing football. I was like, holy shit, I forgot about Nathan Ake. Like, yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's insane. Like, these guys have just players for days. <laughs> Quality players on that. Actually, if you think about it, though, the two teams that got to the final, Chelsea, Chelsea, has Chelsea had, had the best depth in the world yeah. like, in terms of, yeah. like, I think all, like, they, like, for Chelsea, you don't even see Tammy Abraham. Not at all. Or and like against Man City, they beat Man City, right? Yeah, they did. Mason Mount, no their best player, hasn't played. Didn't play. Yeah, they started Billy Gilmore, didn't they? Yeah, Billy Gilmore started. <laughs> uh, guy, let like, me see who else didn't... didn't start. Jorginho didn't start. Zuma did not start. Hudson Odoi did not start. Havertz didn't start. Giroud did not start. They have Giroud. Giroud. <laughs> Giroud is. One of the best strikers. No, I, think, the I think that was kind of the difference this year, as well as both teams had the solid defense that they built upon. They were building upon, which is pretty impressive. But mm. I think the most important thing was their death because their death because in COVID, a lot of shit has happened this year. But every time they were able to adjust. But Bayern, they had Lewandowski getting injured. I think another, um, Nagby got got COVID. And because of that, Bayern were knocked out against PSG. So, like, I think Man City were able, more equipped to do it because of their depth. Maybe they don't have the best team in the world, but Man City, I think they do. Actually. Manchester City does. Maybe, I'm saying, I'm saying maybe Bayern does. Oh, well, yeah, Man that's arguable. But Man City have the best. I think depth. the thing about it is they have the best squad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the squad, the Manchester squad City is the best team. squad in the world because Bayern, maybe if they try, would beat Manchester City. But I feel like Manchester City has to like do considerably less like they have to put like the effort levels just there's like the other teams have to really put up a fight that Manchester City doesn't and like it's it's just like insane how much their depth has really just yeah taken other teams the resources off. they have at their mm-hmm. they just have more resources to, to they literally manage. have I, like I a feeder they have their own farm system feeder system between NYCFC there's, I think, in Australia, yeah, like... Because I, I, I was looking at NYCFC, and I literally looked at the jersey, I'm like, this is Man City. Like, this is, yeah, it is, yeah. like, this is Man City, but in New York. Like, and I know they're all interconnected and stuff. Like, this is low-key uh, international monopoly on football. They, they, they're starting. Like, they can actually... <laughs> they can do it, I feel. Uh, another point to bring up, up across as well, so we were talking about their depth, and obviously I think that's why... We, I think that's why Man City, even though they haven't been good, I don't think this is their best team because yeah. I. But well, I think what, as Dylan said before, they're more equipped. I think that's why they're able to. I, I think the quality of this year has been lower because I mean, has been less because of the COVID and stuff like that. But, but I, I, I just think Man City's de- like Man City were more, as you said, more equipped for, to deal with it. But yeah, I mean, what do you guys think of? Why do you think of Chelsea this? year? Right, now. they beat Man City, a huge win. Obviously, I, they're making top four, no question about it. Of course, I hate Chelsea. All right, I, oh, I know them. you. I know you love Chelsea, so this is a great top. This is a great topic for you. So, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, no, I hate them. Yeah, I, but I, I, I have to. You have to give them their credit. I mean, Tuchel came in and just instantly made them a, a world class team. I feel like 
I mean, yeah, they were they were good with Lampard. They had they had good football, but the consistency just wasn't there. And they were really like you would always be like, okay, Chelsea can lose this game. But now I feel, I mean, yeah, you still have a lot of people are saying that Tuchel is a new manager bounce, but it's been 19 games now. He has he's proven himself to a certain extent that he can provide a certain level of football for Chelsea. It's just whether or not it's just it's at this point it's just watching him over like um, a longer time frame just to see what he can do. Um, but it's scary now, Chelsea. I fucking hate it. It's so scary. <laughs> yeah. Chelsea were like a proto Man City. They were like doing what Manchester City was trying to do before was mm-hmm. like Abramovich and uh, just taking over and making this whole system with a deep squad and mm-hmm. pouring money into resources. But Manchester City really perfected it. Yeah, no. Like, Man City had the formula down pat perfectly. Mm-hmm. They, they've done it excellently. Yeah, Chelsea did it on a smaller level because I mean, yeah, they won the Champions League, and that's what they won the Champions League before Man City did, obviously, um, and stuff. Um, so Chelsea had a better Champions League performance, but like Man City in the league, how they did in England was definitely better than when, like, you know, back when Man United and Chelsea were scrapping and stuff. Like, yeah, Chelsea were playing like good football then, but I feel like Man City, it's it's more attractive football. It's it's mm-hmm. it's. It's just, it's so much power. Like, the amount of and power think, they, have, yeah. the they have, it's insane. Think mm-hmm. about also what the English League is. Like, in the uh, in Bundesliga, there's there's the 50 plus one. You can't have a mm-hmm. team like Manchester City. In La Liga, it's still a lot of club-run stuff, even though those teams are, like, huge monopolies. They're, like, mm-hmm. Real Madrid and Barcelona are essentially businesses, mm-hmm. but they're not like Manchester City, which is literally, like, an, it's an entire operation yeah, it's a sure. it's more than a business it's str- it's a football like an, institution yeah bro, yeah and and then guess what it's because the guy who bought them i mean like he has he has enough money to just do whatever he wants and he likes football and he's like mm-hmm. into it like that and he's it's not like fiorentino prayer is running real madrid yeah because, who doesn't know what he's talking about yeah he like yeah he, he probably likes to watch a football game or something um like he probably watched football when he was a kid or something but that guy's a pure business guy like at the end of the day i mean as money. a kid he was probably complaining about um 90 minutes too long yeah exactly no he probably really was but you see man like shake mansoor and then like they really just want to control football and just be like the best at it mm-hmm. i'm saying that because that was a quote he said yeah, no, he did. Yeah, because that's what the Super League was even proposing. Like, yeah, yeah we're gonna, that's what he we're wants. gonna spice it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, man, I think Man City and Chelsea, especially they with the money that they put in was that def- definitely you could see that with their squad depth, especially right. I think right, and they definitely invest in their academy a lot, both teams. Mm-hmm. And I think Chelsea are definitely Chelsea have been the best academy for so many years. I think now it's really showing with their squad when they have mm-hmm. Hudson and Doy, Tammy Abraham. Billy Gilmore coming into the team now. What do you think happened in those few years for Chelsea? Because Chelsea, obviously, they had, like, the early 2010s were a really bright time for Chelsea. And then they kind of, 2016, I mean, 2015, like 2014, 2015, they were kind of, and in 2016, they won. Or the, No, not 2016, Leicester won. They won the year after Leicester, right? 2017? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, but besides the 2017 title, and the 2017 title, even it was a good title, but it was not, like, convincing, like, Liverpool or Manchester City were. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's just. I mean, I don't. I mean, you think it's just? Uh, yeah, I don't it's, really I, know. I think it's just the city's really just perfected it. I no, they have to, because even when you look at title defense, right? Like, who, who are the teams that have won the title over the years? Like, yeah, it's very hard to defend a title. As you yeah, said, exactly. Because last time Manchester United won a title, 2012, 2013, there was no title defense the next season, right? There was, there was none. Liverpool right now, no title defense whatsoever. There was a, at the beginning of the season. I'd say there was. Yeah, but was, at the, then, yeah. At the end of the season, you're gonna look back at the season. And it's it's not because like, no, I'm looking back at yeah. There's no title like the, the title was not defended properly. Um, but Man City are the only one who was actually like put up a proper title defense. Well, where what did Chelsea finish after they after they won the league? Didn't they, they go like have like a really bad form? Yeah, 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 yeah. They did. Yeah, it was so bad. So Man City, Man City are really, they've really had the true consistency over the league um, in, in, in the modern league, I, I feel. For the modern and I player. think that applies to the whole institutional system. and the squad Exactly. Aspect, of it? course, because yeah. they have the money and they're putting the money into football. Like every, every, most of the money they spend, it's, it's to make them a better footballing system, right? 
Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna gain their money through players, that shirt sales and stuff. But it's not like the Glazers where they're taking the money and putting it in their pockets, and they'll give you like a hundred million to buy Cavani last minute after not listening to you for the. I whole wondered summer. how the Bucks bought all these good football players, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where are the Bucks getting all this money? Couldn't be the <laughs> Manchester United supporters' pockets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh gosh. But uh, okay, I think that. I think this leads to a good part of the of the segment. We'll obviously get to the Austin Villa Man United game after this, but I think we I think I think the whole Glazers talk definitely got us to a good transition to mm-hmm. what happened last mm-hmm. week. Uh obviously Liverpool Man United the Liverpool was postponed. Yeah. There are a lot of protests going on, and there is a lot of and against the Glazers because they weren't spending they weren't spending money in the club and they had yeah. a lot of depth going on. I and can't it, believe I'm going to say this, but for once on Twitter, I found myself enjoying and agreeing with the banter of United fans. Yeah. So, There's lots of solidarity around here. So, yeah, let, let's get first. Let, first of all, so we let's, let's get Alex's thoughts first because he's a United fan. Yeah. And let's see what – obviously, Dylan, you have a more um, – you, you, you watch the NFL, watch American sports more than, I, than both of us do. Mm-hmm. So you could give your perspective on on the Glazers in like Tampa as you would did before, but Alex, yeah, it's what... a lot of it is just yeah. The Glazers are just at the end of the day, the way the Glazers run Manchester United, it isn't holding. It isn't it, it isn't upholding the Manchester United legacy. Um, it's just they're at at a certain point now, they're they're kind of they're they're using the clubs like big name. Like the the main problem is the relationship the Glazers have with Manchester United. The sentiment that the Glazers have of Manchester United in their heads. It's like they're running it. They're just using the name for personal profit. I mean, yeah, that's what capitalism is and stuff. But like, we're not trying to have that right now. Like, and the whole catalyst was the Super League and the fifty plus one, and you're comparing mm-hmm. it to Bundesliga. And you're like, at the end of the day, we looked at it and we're like, nah. Like the Glazers, we've had enough. Like you can you can leave now because. You, you you come here from America and you just you where your little money pig and stuff, but it does we don't we're not feeling the actual you know it doesn't feel like a football institution. It just feels like a bunch of it just feels like it just literally feels like a business as you said like Real Madrid and, and Barcelona. Even Real Madrid and Barcelona are bigger are more football institutions. So yeah, they're football, football institutions, but they operate as a business. They've become yeah, a business. Up, exactly. Because they're a brand now. They're brands. Exactly. Us, we don't. I don't. It doesn't feel football. It doesn't feel. It's like, a brand. Manchester United yeah, exactly. is a brand. It's a brand. So and it's can, I, about- can I like follow follow it up with like what what are the actions like I kind of mentioned actions that I think that kind of led to it like what are the actions before the Super League stuff that kind of led to before the Super League stuff happened? it's just like um first of all the transfer market it's it was always like to get a player that we wanted it was always a grind like you could tell that. Like, it was always reluctance from the Glazers to kind of, like, put the money where the fans wanted to be. Because um, even this season, like, we didn't get Sancho like we wanted for 120 mil. And we kept moaning, we kept moaning, we kept moaning until we, we forced them to get Cavani on a free or something. Or, like, I don't remember the actual fee, but, like, we forced them to get it. But, like, it, the transfer market was the main thing for me, at least. Like, it just felt... It didn't feel right all the time. Like, it was just never... We never went in with a clear plan and a clear goal for like the past few markets. I mean, even Bruno, it took us a while to get him. Um, we got him in the middle of the year. We've been trying to get him from the summer before. And it's just, the Glazers just, they're just like, they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll try a thing. We'll try a thing. Like, they keep holding out. Like, each deal, each deal gets harder and harder as the time goes by. I think the problem is with the Glazers also, uh, I, like, we're talking about uh, John Henry and stuff. But mm-hmm. the thing about John Henry and like, I think Liverpool, their ownership has done better at, um, what's it called? Like, making it into a brand, but also a sustainable team. Kind of like mm-hmm. City, without as much as a budget. And I just, this also goes, like, Josh, to American sports. I'm a huge MOB fan. They own, like, how um, the Glazers own the Bucks, the um, Henry, oh, uh, Hen- John, uh, Fenway uh, Sports Group owns yeah. uh, the Red Sox. So, the Red Sox, they did the same thing before Liverpool. The Red Sox were shit. They had, didn't win a title for 86 years. Henry came in, and they got their first title in 86 years. Exactly. Um, so they had a formula, and it worked with Liverpool again. They got their first title in 30 years. 
However, before Liverpool had the Henrys, they had shit owners also from America, Gillette. So it's really count your blessings because American mm-hmm. owners could either bring in a good business model that really brings in help sustainable teams or they could just try to make profit off the brand. And exactly. Henry, I think recently, has been trying to do that a little too much, make profit off the brand. And he has to really go back to what made us great in 2018 and 2019 was mm-hmm. that sustainable. Mm-hmm. Our, how we really... Because we don't have nearly as much money as Manchester City, not even maybe even you, but yeah, no. um, we still know how to uh, know what to do with the money, yeah. so, which is really worked in favor of us. But mm-hmm. the thing is, like, I don't even think the greatest of the worst. I think Kroenke might be even worse than. Oh yeah, Kroenke's yeah. worse than them. No, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Arsenal fans have a much bigger right to be. And the thing is, it's just kind of like shocking to me because right now the Buck, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were shit for. A good amount of time, and mm-hmm. then over the last season, they just got every fucking player. They got fucking all Tom the good Brady. players. Fucking Tom yeah, Brady. like it's insane. Like that's all you need to know. It's like us getting messy right now. Mm-hmm. It's like, like the and like Tom, are, no, no, it's like you're yeah. getting Pele. Tom Brady is the undisputed goat of football. Yeah. he's the undisputed NFL goat. Jesus, like you got, you just got Tom Brady. Like they got Tom Brady, and like they just won the Super Bowl, and they're like, yeah, we're chilling. Imagine they're favorites to win again. again. Yeah. It's exactly they're gonna win it again, but that's the thing. It's never gonna be that easy for United. Like the fans mm-hmm. have to beg; they have to beg the Glazers for Tom Brady. I, I feel like mm-hmm. it's not gonna be like the. the this is the not Glazers. a connection. Yeah, there's not. There's no connection with it. Like, it, it. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And at at the end of the day, it's just American owners. It's like there's just it's just a disconnect with the British fans at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, sure. and it just doesn't. It just it's it's just not good. For, for, that's for yeah that's football. what we're, i'm also agreeing with henry like there's still that disconnect even though he has used the american business model to put a winning product on the field mm-hmm. um there's, there's still, still that disconnect, disconnect that's always going to exist yeah like there's a lot of instances like mm-hmm. they try to raise the ticket prices um and like they try to follow their workers be, like during covid and like stuff like that like there is a disconnect between yeah. them and that's big with Arsenal too. Arsenal's ticket prices, that was a thing for I remember one season, like they raised the season ticket prices. I think it's and still a problem went. for Arsenal. It's still, obvious everything's still a problem for Arsenal. Arsenal is like, <laughs> it's, it's still bad. Like they're, because when they have the, they're, they're firing their workers and stuff, they just don't treat them. Like the way they fire them and let them go just to, you know, stay. Like the whole COVID season was so like bad for, for Arsenal. And it's still bad. It's still getting bad because like they're still protesting and stuff. And they're tenth now, like they're tenth, like it's not good. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, with the with like the tra- with like the transfers itself, to be honest, like it did, like I remember when Mourinho himself was complaining that he he wanted Maguire the year the year before. He wanted he wanted a player like Bruno the year before. He wanted uh, I think he I think he wanted the left back as well, right? They got yeah. Tate Ellis, even though he's not not starting, but no, yeah, Shaw's good. But, he, right but, he, but, Marino, but Mourinho wanted that, and mm-hmm. so like, and and he never was able to get what he wanted until the year later. Oh, they got a year later, and it just it's it just feels like hard. it just feels like ever since Fergie left, there has not been a plan for Man United. It's been swapping no this that big signing this that, but there never has been a plan. Exactly. Because even when we're lucky that Cavani has been good for us, the Cavani signing did not feel good. Yeah, it was a lucky signing. It was, yeah, it did not not feel good when we got him. Like, it was last minute. It felt like a, it felt like a backhanded, like, backhanded compliments. Yeah, like a backhanded buy. Like, it was just like, yeah, we got the player, but like, it it didn't feel like there was a clear plan with with it. Luckily, it's turned out brilliant. He's scoring goals for us. He's mentoring Mason Greenwood and it's going well. Mm -hmm. Greenwood has been firing off because of it but they, they just got lucky yeah and that's and that's and that's what the feeling is right now the second place if there's a lot of there's a lot of luck there's a lot of luck feeling behind it yeah we've been good this season we played good football this season we've also played very shit football this season um mm-hmm. but it's like it just shows the like, crazy it, 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 it doesn't it. feel it doesn't feel secure like man city whenever i'm watching man city it's always a comfortable match i'm watching i always feel nice because it, the whole institution just feels secure, even when they're not playing well. Like you know that they're gonna have a they're gonna have a meeting and they're gonna have a decent solution to it. Every Manchester United game is just hypertension, bro. It just feels like a one-off season that United are being second. Like you could you could definitely see United be fourth this, next year and exactly. Liverpool and Chelsea being ahead of them. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. We need to enact change. We need to enact change that brings the club to a consistent state of you know like we have a framework where okay we're not good 
what's the solution and we have like a set algorithm to go through right now we have no there's no algorithm for manchester united we're just we have all this brilliant man management and and, and dreams and hopes and that's it okay so i guess i'll follow this up but what i mean what did you think of the protests overall uh, did you think they worked and like the i like do you think this game being postponed showed the glazers that do you, think, I mean, yeah. do you think it helped prove a point to apply pressure or like what what do you make of the outcome of the protest? What do you think of them running onto the field? Like, like all that, all of, like, yeah, all of that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you want change that, I think that's one of the best ways to get change. Cause there's no way you're going to talk. You're going to write a letter to the Glazers and they're going to read it and be like, wow, maybe we should make a change, bro. They don't care. They have billions. Like you have to, you have to take a billion away from them. And each time you take a billion away from them, they're like, well, what happened? Cause because now that they protested, right, we, they put the club in a, in a worse position than they would have been if they just played the match on that Sunday, on that, on that day. Because now we have four games in seven days and we're probably not going to beat Liverpool um, and stuff. And you put the club under pressure like that, you know. Um, you, you're not playing the match on TV when everybody, like you had your promotion for the match going on and you cancel it and stuff and you postpone it. You got to spend more money on promotion or whatever, but like, it, it's going to hurt them. And if they keep protesting and they get more stuff like that, inconvenience in the club, get the club getting fines and stuff, it will send a message. And I think that's the best way. So although it's not ideal, right? It's never ideal in the moment. It's not going to be good for our season, the protests. It is what, I feel like it is what has to happen for the, for the longevity of the club. Because what the Glazers are relying on are just Manchester United having a great name forever. And they just kind of do the bare minimum to maintain that great name. But like, that's just not what it is. We have to keep growing. We have to keep growing. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to add on to, to that point, like mm -hmm. I wanted to add on, I forgot what was, I, I literally blanked out. What was, what was I going to say? Yeah. I mean, I definitely do think that the pro the protest, what happened was, was definitely a good thing. I, and mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There's the point I wanted to make. Like and another, what, it, what shows that was good that it, it went, it was all over the news in, in America. Like we, exactly. I saw this article in the New York times, I saw it on CNN. I saw it on Fox News. I saw it in every. I, I saw like a, a few days ago. I saw an article in Fox News that was saying that Man United fans are planning to protest again during the Liverpool game, and this game I mean, outside. Was, yeah, the same. They want to do the same thing again. Well, again, I'm just saying. Don't they get into the grounds? They just walked in like it was the U.S. Capitol. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. That's what they did. Yeah. <laughs> But but I'm but That's I'm just saying I'm just saying to prove to like expand on my point I'm saying since this is in the news, it's definitely getting attention to the yeah players because you don't know if the Glazers are watching the games or this and that but you definitely know this on the news even the Americans know about it too don't even watch football but they now the Glazers they, definitely now, watch every NFL game around them of course I wouldn't they do put it on put it on them that they don't watch the United games. I've seen some stats. Like the last time they came to an in-person United game, was like it was so long ago. They definitely go to eight every all eight games in Tampa. Yeah. Now nine. Mm. <laughs> like what the hell is that even? No. I mean, yeah. And 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 you can't even make the argument. Oh, England's far away from. Uh, it's five. It's a five-hour flight New York to Manchester. Yeah, like, like calm it's, down. It takes longer to get from New York to California than New yeah. York to Manchester. And they go to California. I know they go to California at least once a month. Like I know that. I have mm. to know that, right? Like they, they have jets and stuff and they, you can go to London and you can, they did They didn't even watch our best nights. Like, you know, those PSG nights, you know, when we, when we play well against them mm. in the Champions League and stuff like they don't watch that, bro. I know that. And that's just, that's just the main thing. I want an owner to literally be, lift the trophy with the players. That, that would be nice. You know, they're kissing the trophy. They're getting, they're getting. I mean, they were at the Europa League final. Them. They were at the Europa League Yeah. Final. But yeah, they shook their hands and they're like, "Yeah, thank you for thank you for the money, thank you for the competition <laughs> yeah. money. We're we're, go, we're we're catching a flight back to New York now to go buy Tom Brady." Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> some I mean, shit, bro. Like, isn't they there, don't yeah, that's basically what they did. Yeah, no, obviously. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm just, it's just, it's yeah, just, it just. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Dylan, what did you make of the protests? They were bound to happen, and I'm mm -hmm. surprised it didn't happen because. Like before all this Europe uh, Super League shit happened, like they hate, like United fans hate the Glazers. And if there's there no better match to do it at, like you're playing, it's Man United Liverpool. It's the it's biggest the biggest match in football. Season. It's the biggest 
Oh, in English football, yeah. Yeah. The biggest game. I think that was that was a huge thing that they did. And they basically did they ran in, they got into the main and they ground they were there are some violence, of course, we condemn all we condemn all of it, we condone mm-hmm. all of it and that that stuff, but we like we do not condone that stuff, but like but yeah, I mean they definitely made a big impact and it postponed the game and now there's threats to, for them to do it for to postpone it again. And that, again, in order to stop the protest, that will that will cost Man United some money, not some money to like exactly. Really it's just a, it's a good inconvenience to have. It's a good it, inconvenience for the for 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 them for, in yeah. perspective in the fans' perspective. So, but yeah, what heading it? But now because of that, United had to play. They had to play four games in seven days. So yep. three games in five days. Like today, they played against Austin Villa. They won three mm-hmm. one. What did what did you make of the performance, Alex? I didn't I didn't watch the game because uh, I I went out late last night. Um, uh-huh. But I saw the goals. Uh, I didn't see Bruno's pen. I didn't see the pen. But you know that's a pen. Yeah. I really like I I really like Greenwood's goal. I loved it because um, he just he's so composed. Like he 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 makes his positioning is great. His his role, like he moves with the ball really well. And I just know he's only getting better from here. And I can't believe people are actually writing off a nine-year-old because he had a little rough, a 19-year-old because he had a little rough patch. Like people are like, see, Green was not the star boy, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you talking about? This guy is literally cracked. Like he, he just he he just broke Rooney's um teenage goal scoring record for mm-hmm. United. I mean, Rooney still has more teenage goals than him because he had like 16 before, like um at Everton or whatever. But yeah. like He's doing well, and Cavani is teaching him and stuff. And even in the Europa League the other day, um, some guy pushed to Greenwood. Um, some Roma guy pushed Greenwood. Like Cavani was, he got so mad. Like he came up and he started. He was like all up in the guy's face. So I really think that this relationship he has with um, fucking um, Cavani and just how he's been this season. He added the passing and the assisting and the playmaking to his game. I'm really looking forward to what he's gonna do next season. Yeah. And of course, you have the the standard Cavani goal, you know, the header, the little glancing header. Um, Rashford, that ball in by him. If you guys saw that, you can pull up the goal right now. That was insane. Like he just moves it and he just curls it around the entire back line. And he just I mean he, Cavani didn't have to do anything. Look at the ball. Cavani, all he had to do was just touch the ball in. It was a great that's game. How, that's how it's like Miner's goal yesterday when Salah with a yeah. ball like yeah, I could definitely imagine that. But I, I, found, I found an interesting stat after the game with Bruno. Uh, how Bru- it took it took Ronaldo 112 matches to score his first 25 goal Premier League goals for Man United. Bruno mm-hmm. has done it in 48 games. Exactly. It just exactly. Uh, Bruno has been incredible for you guys. He's been incredible. Like, he just has that. He has that work ethic. He he's crazy. Like he has a, he's a little engine in him because he honestly technically. Like technical ability wise, Bruno isn't like he's not the best. Like he's a professional football. He's a prof- he's a professional cam, right? He's a professional playmaker, bro. But like he's not. I don't think he's world class in terms of technical ability. He just he 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 just tries a lot. He tries a lot. He tries everything. He tries a lot, and it just works. Um, you know, he has a work ethic. I think a lot of it is his work ethic and his and his little engine inside of him. Yeah, I mean, definitely on downplaying like his ability, like he definitely has like the passing and stuff. But no, I mean, Bruno is an amazing player. Like, he's but you see in the matches, like as in you, you, you have like a lot of bad passes. Like you'll just be like, "What the fuck are you doing, Bruno?" But like you'll get like you still get like two goals or an assist like that game, and you still play like mm-hmm. what the hell. And this is another game where you get, came from one nil down to win the game. No, they just need to stop scoring against us first because if they do that, they'll <laughs> I mean, win that the always game. happens. Because... <laughs> you win anyway. Yeah, we're, we're, you just we're have such a good mentality. Right you know what to do when you're one nil down. You like and that, no, we I play now, better when we're one nil down. Too. That's the one thing that I think will stay. But no, we're definitely play better when we're one nil down. Once, because once we start a game, a lot of the times we're like, "What are we doing?" And then when we when we concede, it's a whole new team. Like yeah, you see it just flip. flip. Insane, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. What do you think of that game, Dylan? I mean, the title race is still on because of that, as well. Uh, I mean, which one? They did not really care. They I mean, United game, yeah. yeah. It's like whatever. And I, I mean, when do United play? No, United oh. don't play City at any time more. No, no they don't. So it's... yeah, we're done with City. 
That would have been cool, though, if we had a... Oh, yeah, that would have yeah. been, been pretty sick, yeah. Jeez. But, yeah, yeah, I think that's all. That's basically as much we could say about the game as we could. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a standard game against Villa. Like, yeah, but let's... Uh, pre- like, I want to preview the upcoming fixtures. Some hu- midweek fixtures, huge for the... I mean, huge for the top four. I mean, Chelsea <laughs> and Arsenal. I think if Chelsea win this game, they, they, I think they're basically all but in the top four. Yeah, no, for Chelsea sure. Beat but, Arsenal, or do you think that, that Arsenal could give a surprise? Arsenal can beat Chelsea on the day. Um, I mean, we'll see how they we'll see how, we'll see how they play against West Brom later today. Um, I mean, right, they're playing right now. They're actually playing right now. What's the score? It's nil nil. Yeah, but like we'll see how they do against them, and then we we can set the top. But like, because I mean, Arsenal is one of those teams like you can they can they can have a great day, but they've been shit for the whole season. Yeah, I see this being a one-one draw. To be honest, no. Yeah. But Chelsea I mean, are spectacular. Chelsea played that final this weekend, and I think, that, and they have a lot of games all over the place. And Arsenal are good at giving a surprise at Stamford Bridge, as we saw last year with the two-two draw. Exactly. So I see one-one here. I don't know. I feel like it is a crazy year. Who knows at this point? It is. Arsenal have nothing to lose. Chelsea kind of. No, they don't. They just have to go all out. They just have to go all out. Yeah, so I think with given this winning against Man City, I think Chelsea definitely have a lot of breathing space. So I could, yeah, one one. What do you guys think? One one. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, it's so that's a safe call. One yeah. one or two one Chelsea. I can. See. Yeah, yeah two one Chelsea, Chelsea yeah. also. Good. Arsenal will not win this game. Yeah. If if, if Arsenal's Rob, winning it, I, you you guys could clip me. I'll be very happy to. So. Yeah. If Arsenal win this game, as I said, it's just because it's a it's an outlier in the season. Like they had like a great day, like everything. Yeah. Or Chelsea I mean, had a bad if day. I'm, if I'm wrong, you could clip. You could, I'll clip myself in the next episode. I'll That's be, what it's about. That's what it's about. Yourself. But yeah, uh, man, they also play on Tuesday. They play another yeah. game. We're playing on Tuesday. He's, he, in your crazy fixture list, you play yeah. Leicester City. Leicester, exactly. That's my. I, I'm sure if we, Dylan, can, can, I think we can say we're cheering for Man United for once. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, say less. Yeah, I love, yeah, to, see, I love to see that. Wow. What do you think will happen here, Alex? Do you, are you confident? Um, honestly, it's rough. I mean, this is a this is a game we have. We 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 technically want to win more than the Liverpool game because Leicester is closer to us. Um, but. I don't know. It's just it's because the games are so close. Leicester Tuesday, Liverpool Thursday. What the fuck is that? Yeah. What, so like... do, you, do you think do you think there will be a lot of rotation between the two games? How do you think but that will go? Not even because Ole. That's the thing. That's what Ole does. He, he every time he drops a starting <laughs> that's lineup, what I was like, going to say too. You always not going to drop. So like Rashford's playing tomorrow. I mean on Tuesday, and I'm gonna be like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I bet Rashford's gonna play on Tuesday, and he's gonna play on Thursday. It's gonna be so fucked. He's gonna get injured. Maguire's well, out. got injured. Yeah, Maguire's out. I mean, it was only a matter of time. I'm surprised Maguire hasn't gotten injured yet. Like that guy, he does not look athletic to me, and he plays like the most minutes. He's playing the most minutes in Europe, like for the past year or two, and it's in, it's kind of been mad. Um. But yeah, no, it's it's just it's up to Ole. I mean, Man United is a lottery in terms of like when Ole is gonna substitute, when Ole is gonna um rotate players. Like he's just so weird with that. Um, we yeah. can honestly just hope for the best. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna say Man United do win this game though. Like I hope they do. Like, yeah, because Leicester are in poor form. Um, but Leicester's always been a hard team for us to face. Yeah, but Kalachi um, and Nacho is a big threat, so that's the one player. Of course, you keep yeah, Nacho, on, he's in form. He said that Leicester have been poor. Yeah, no, they've been basketball. poor. They've been poor. But again, it's on the day. It's always just about what happens on the day. It's. I really don't think we're going to... It's hard for us to get... If we can get six points from this week, I will believe that we'll have a, a, a great season next year. Mm. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Because if we everything goes right this summer... I mean, not even talking about transfers. Yeah, you can get a one-two player and stuff. But I'm just talking about in terms of the, the squad, just yeah, yeah. remembering this season and remembering how to play football, you know, yeah, and just, you know, training yeah. well and stuff. We set up nice. But I don't think we're getting six points from the two matches. This no, week. I don't think so either. But hopefully but we, we do that game, game though. So, yeah, hopefully. Yo, what do you think? I hope they get points in the Leicester game. And because yeah. it's the first game, I you think, think they, they will. will. Or 
I think they will be. If, if they're going to drop points in any game, it's going to be like the ones after Leicester. Yeah, this... I think so too. I think the follow-up games will be harder mm-hmm. for the Man United. But, so yeah, let's get right into the big game. Man United versus Liverpool. I said this in the last episode, but Liverpool's record at Old Trafford is not good at all. Liverpool's mm-hmm. last win at Old Trafford was 3-0 in the 2013-14 season. Uh, Gerard scored two PKs and Suarez got a goal. That season was the season when I went to the 3-2 Man City game. And that was when I was in sixth grade, to put perspective into that. So, yeah. So, and ever since, it's been four draws and four losses. The record at Old Trafford since the 20, 2010 2011 season is one win, four draws, and nine losses. And it's crazy how even like during our recent performances, we just like, I don't know, one time, it was I think last season where we were going into Man to Old Trafford and we thought we were going to steamroll them and we got a draw. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That was one of the best matches. I remember that was a highlight of one of our last of our last season. Um, mm-hmm. Just that draw at Old Trafford. That was the highlight. Yeah. Was a, and you could have won the game yeah. too. Exactly. Wow. That was like major because you guys were insane last season. I remember watching you guys, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like you guys are like, you guys are just fire. And then, especially on. Especially before the game, we're like, you know, this is such a tough game. And then we, we pull out the draw. That was mad. And to pull out a draw in against an informed Liverpool side as, as a Manchester United manager at home, you're getting, like, you're, you're in the bed with the fans, bro. Like, they love you. They love you. And that's why that's why Ole has such a good, like, he, I mean, he has his haters still. But, like, I mean, after that, he was kind of like, that's when he was kind of like, oh, Ole, Ole in. Like, a lot of people are like, Ole in, you know? So what? What's your okay? So since we're there, what's your stance on Ole right now? Ole, it's just so rough. It's so rough because, like, I mean, he's so he's he's shaky in a lot of regards. Um, I think, but like, the facts are there. Like, what has he done here? Like, he's done good stuff. You know, he's 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 gotten us to play like really good attacking football. Our counter attacks are insane. Um, this is the best our attackers have been like we've actually been able to break down teams you know um, and I, I mean yeah there are a lot of games especially that Wolves game like we play against a low block and it's bad but um, this season is actually the best we played against low blocks contrary to popular belief like because the after Sir Alex Ferguson we just struggled against low blocking teams but like um, I feel like Solskjaer actually has brought out a lot of good in Manchester United, but there's still a lot of cons about him, I feel. Like, for example, Rashford is literally not going to make it past 25 years old. Like, this guy, he's being used like a piece of soap. He is, like, he is, he's getting, he's getting played too many times. Like, he's going to be exhausted. And he, he's, he's not even recovered. He's not even fully 100% fit. He'll be limping, walking into the hotel, and he's starting the game tomorrow. Like, I really don't like how often he plays Rashford, but I, I, I am of the belief that he's our best player um, and always brought the best out of him. But I don't know. Um, I, I know that as soon as like we start going down, because as you say, if we have a bad season next year, everybody's going to be Ole out. Everybody's going to be Ole out. I'm calling it now. It's just everybody's like Ole in because like, yeah, we're in second place, Europa League final. Um, we had a, you have to remember like what we did in the Champions League this season was poor. It was abysmal. It was abysmal. Um, we were literally leading the top group, like like one of the hardest groups and then we just threw it all away through some. So you're like 50 50 with Oli right now. You're not really. Yeah, it, exactly. Like I think I think that's you, most fans to be honest. You need a title like, to be convinced. Bounds. I need a title to be convinced. I literally do, um, because we haven't won the title since Sir Alex Ferguson. Oli is a real deal if he wins the title, bro. It's as easy as that. It's easy as that. Yeah, it, it's kind of on, it's it's a 50 50 one because I feel like if you made past the group and like lost in the in the last 16. Mm-hmm. Against a good team, you would have yeah. been a little bit more. Ha- whatever. I'd have been more content with my Champions League performance like, this season. I have a lot of friends who are only out personally, mm-hmm. a lot only in. So it's like kind of. I not, can't. I think I see about I see about right when I watch you guys, especially against the big teams, that you guys play more boring. But but at the same time, I feel like you guys at least are getting points off the game. These games, yeah, you guys weren't able to so. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I, it was worse before. I, so I be, think you did yeah. progress. Exactly. I feel like I think I'd have to be insane to kind of just say 
to be right now and tell you Ole out. Because if you're saying Ole out, that means that you want him to get sacks tomorrow. No. Doesn't that mean that you want that you're, you're happy if you hear he gets sacked tomorrow? I'm not happy if Ole gets sacked tomorrow. Like, what does that accomplish? Literally nothing. We're in second place. We're in a worse off position if Ole gets sacked tomorrow. So, yeah. like, I, I can't, it'll be dumb to say Ole out right now. Mm. Yeah. So, what, what are we saying? Okay. So, how well, predictions for the match? I mean, you said that you weren't confident for this Liverpool game, right, Alex? Yeah, I'm not confident for it. Um, I could see a draw. I could even see a loss. Even I really can see a loss after this Leicester game. We're losing. I feel it. There's no way we're playing Leicester and then and then and then playing like peak football right after that. Like I don't I don't see us having a good game. Um, but how have you guys been? I mean, and you guys just beat Southampton. I mean, yeah, you guys said you were like in for. Like just, I mean, Allison had to make a lot of saves and stuff. It could be still a close game, but I I really think United this four game in this four game in seven days thing or three games in five how you put it, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna show in Liverpool. I really think it's gonna show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dylan, what do you think? I'm just hoping for like a one nothing win. <laughs> so you're not yeah. confident either. Yeah, I mean, I just want us. Uh, it's going to be a tough game, but I think Liverpool's the upper hand just with the scheduling thing. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that's giving me. Like, if we played this game last week, we previewed this game last week. Obviously, mm-hmm. Dylan, you weren't there, but mm-hmm. Owen is there. Uh, we had two main United fans, Argy and Connor, who were here. And mm-hmm. they were com- they were smiling. They were confident. Actually, they weren't that confident. They thought it would be like a 1-1, 2-1 win. Yeah, you know, but we were we but were not looking confident. forward to that we game were, because this is this is when oh, we had the same problem now. But I remember we we thought Phillips would, wouldn't be able to play, and then we saw that he mm-hmm. started, and now and we, now we we saw the lineup before that he started. He was starting, but the game is postponed. But we were we were like, who's our center back going to be? This that is the Reese Williams again, and it may be Reese Williams again. We're going to get into the lineup very soon, but if that's the case. I'm not sure how confident I can be because of the pace United have. And we saw we were struggling against Southampton. But at the same time, United do do have a lot of fixtures right now. So may, I said 2-1 originally. But I think yeah. I, was at two, I said 2-1 May United, by the way, originally. And Owen uh, said anything. But I think I'll bump it up and say 1-1 because of United's game. So the games United are playing, they have played so many games. But Dylan, what I mean, Dylan, what do you what do you think of like the game? Just yeah, like what do you think? It's gonna. If I see anything, I want. I really want like a late like winner from Salah. Like, what do you actually like, think will happen? Do you think you will win or? Um, I'm gonna see. Like, if we win, it'd be like a zero zero throughout the whole game, and then Salah's gonna break through the defense. Like mm. United's gonna have some slip up, and then Salah's gonna score off some cheese, uh, well, and then Salah's gonna like. I hope too, and that would keep our Champions League hopes alive. And so we need you guys to beat Leicester, and then we need you guys to lose to us, and then that's what we need. But mm-hmm. yeah, it but can I happen. Think, well, I give I mean, that like a thirty I mean, percent chance think, of happening. I mean, Dylan. I mean, I was talking about the games before. Do you think if we lose to Man United, let's say for example, do you think our mm-hmm. top four is over? And given May United um, lose to beat Leicester, if no, I don't think it's over. I think it's we still have three games that we could easily win. But if Leicester wins and we lose, then it's almost. Oh yeah, then yeah. it's over. Yeah, then I think it will be over because I don't see them losing to Tottenham mm-hmm. in, their, in their final in their final game. I see them getting a point. I mean, it's still gonna be on, but we have a, a lot, sm- a, a lot smaller chance for it to happen. But yeah, th- th- definitely the game on Tuesday will be a huge one heading into this one to see where we are, where we actually are, and what. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But what, what's the what's the line? What's the line, What's our lineups heading into this? We probably should this did this before we predicted. But let's, are we gonna have to have William? Let's start with again? the ho- let's start with the home team. Oh, okay. team. Yeah, last time, so... last time, Argy, Argy actually got the lineup right. So, oh, let's see if you wow. can match that. All right, so I'm gonna say Henderson and goal. Mm-hmm. Um, left back, 
Shaw, center back. I mean, it depends on if Maguire is fit or not. Because I don't think they announced that like his ankles actually fucked or not. But like, say he say he's fit, then Maguire. Say he's not, then it's Bailly. Um, Lindelof, right back, Wan Bissaka. It's gonna be. Actually, I have an update, uh, and I I think they're saying there are some reports. All they said that Maguire this ankle injury could rule Maguire out for a few weeks. Yeah, so, so there you it's go. Gonna be by, it's probably going to be Bailan, but Bailan the law. Um, right back, Juan Bissaka. I mean, there's no right back. We don't have a right back other than Juan Bissaka. I don't know who Brandon Williams is in this game. Um, I don't know, but I don't know. I don't think we're actually going to start McTominay and Fred like in the middle. We're doing McTominay and Fred tomorrow for Leicester because that is who Ole has faith in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know for the middle. I don't know. Hey, Pogba, but Pogba might actually start against Leicester. We actually might get the McTominay for it for um for for Liverpool. We might see. It might be McTominay for it. Maybe Van Van de Beek's not gonna get the start, but he could surprise us. But I'm gonna say McTominay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, Greenwood, um, Greenwood, Cavani. Um, I don't want to say Rashford. I really don't. <laughs> you think he will though? Yeah, I really don't want to see. Ra- I don't want to say Rashford. Um, I don't want to see him too. Don't worry. I'd say, I mean, I think Pogba could get the game in. I think Pogba could go. Mm, interesting. But, but it's like, I really don't want to say Rashford. Is Martial Rashford not, not playing anymore? Playing fuck, right, fuck Martial. That guy, he needs to leave. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very quickly. He, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's matter of fact. Like, there's, no, there's nothing to be said. Yeah, so that, that's basically, basically, your lineup is really unpredictable because of the game. So many games, you don't know how much he's going to rotate and how much he's not going to rotate in these games. Yeah, so that's like yeah, exactly what our right. game Connor had to deal with because of that. Yeah, so, this to you. But, but our yeah, all, this is always sure. update on Maguire. It's actually not as certain as what they said in Athletic. We yeah. might, we have, we've got to check it. It might be a few weeks. It might be a couple mm-hmm. of days. Who knows? I'm not a doctor, and we have got to get. <laughs> Check him and scan him tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Ole, that's the thing. You can never trust anything Ole says to the press. Like, like Ole, is, as I said, he's literally a PR beast. He's a man management god. Like, as in this guy, like, he knows what to say all the time. And, like, he'll never put a foot wrong at saying anything to the press. Like, he's like, so, like, we'll just see. We, we have to just see the lineup at the end of the day. Because it could be some weird shit where he's like, oh, trip the, trip the opposition, Maguire's injured, get Leicester feeling complacent, and then boom. Right then, tomorrow on, on Tuesday, you'll see Maguire just facing um, his old team. So yeah. you never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Dil, let's add a lineup. I think this is a little bit more certain, except one position. Oh, center back. <laughs> yes. Allison, there you go. Robertson. Uh, hopefully, he'll actually, can I just give props to Robertson? He's because of our defensive issues. Robertson said to play in and out. And he's, he's played, played every solid game. This Even season. though his performance haven't been the same in the past few weeks, but I think it's you can see it's right. taken a toll on him. But he still tried to. Uh, he still wants. He's still putting an effort. But you can see that he's had to play every single game, and it's really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is tough. It's tough for anybody. Mm-hmm. Well, here we go. Center back. <laughs> I'm not sure if Kavak is going to be fit for this game. If he is, he's that we have an easy. We have an easy deal. We're done. Mm-hmm. But Kapak Phillips, obviously. But if not, who's gonna play? Would you put Fabino? I don't even know anymore. I mean, I'd be scared. This is the same conversation we had last that. episode, except now it's Phillips is Kabak. So Kabak would be good. Just need Kabak. Ka- if Kabak, I healthy- want to see Reese Williams there. You, you, I mean, he was. We survived against Southampton. We didn't play. We our defense survived. It wasn't good. It survived. Do you think Reese Williams has a future? No, I don't think so. Really, you don't think, think he's fast I mean, enough? I think he's, he's slow. slow. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, obviously, you mean at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. but he's yeah, he's a professional footballer. Regardless, he, he'll get somewhere. He'll get Especially somewhere. If he's, like, yeah, like Liverpool now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's Brighton type B. I mean. <laughs> He's a championship player at best. You think championship? You don't think he's cut off for the league? No. Oh, what no. do you think, Dylan? 
I think I agree with Alex. He could be like a Brighton type player. Yeah. West Brom. Okay, he fit perfectly into West Brom. Oh, West Brom. Brown. West Brom losing right now to 2 0. That's perfect. That's his narrative, bro. Oh, really? They're losing 2 0, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's two- Arsenal scoring more than one goal. It's madness. In the first half, too. Okay. So, what, so what do you think now? It's going to be 1 1. 1 1 shot. Um, Arsenal. Arsenal win. Yeah, no. This is Arsenal's form coming back. No, yeah. Arsenal's going to put a proper effort in. Oh, there you go. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Nicolo, Nicolo Pepe scored. No, I'm, sh- I'm sure we can actually find a stat. Like, whenever Pepe scores, how they do in the next game. Like, I feel like Pepe scores. Like, he doesn't score enough goals. So, the fact that, like, that stat could actually be reliable. Oh, well, I don't really know, to be honest. But No, obviously, no, we're, no, we're not Arsenal fans. We're not going into that, bro. Yeah, I don't care about that that much. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, this is the Liverpool perspective. When there's an Arsenal pr- perspective, they could do that. I couldn't care less, but of course I, I do hope that maybe they could draw Chelsea, even though yeah. they're probably in the top four. But oh, it's even to them. get better though, because I mean but, it's always nice to have Arsenal around, just you know troubling you and like I mean I like the fans and stuff. Like it's never nice seeing like, I mean sometimes it's nice for a while, but like if Arsenal actually are like a tenth place club for like more than like for like, like if you two seasons, get more, yeah, yeah, for 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 a few years, like I'm gonna be like, no, nah, what the fuck? Okay, but. Yeah, let's get let me let's uh let's continue with the Liverpool thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh so yeah, we on. have our set. We have stupid. Uh, I don't know, Dylan. Who are you saying? Fabinho or Reese Williams? If Kabak doesn't play, I'd rather have Fabinho out there. Yeah, yeah, I'd be scared of Fabinho. He can he actually clamps us really well. Yeah, yeah, but I rather him in defensive midfielder, and he sometimes shows mm-hmm. his. Inabilities in center back as well. Of course, mm-hmm. against Newcastle. Always have that. I guess it is what it is. I, I yeah. against Southampton we survived. We didn't defend well. We survived. Oh, what did he? Was he center back for Southampton? Yeah, we basically were outrun. Ba- basically, the proud thing was we were. If Danny Ings was there, we were, they would have scored. I also oh, had some saves to make. Oh yeah, six saves. Oh and yeah, like, no. two of them were like one on ones. That's actually not that's not good at all, to be honest. Oh, yeah, for a center back, cool. for a center back pairing against Southampton, you're yeah. not supposed to be your, your keeper's not supposed to face six shots like that. No, and especially not big chances. But yeah, big chances. So I'm, I want Fabinho. Yeah. Uh, midfield. We have a few midfield injuries. So Kieta, uh, who else was it? Kieta and Milner. I'm not sure they're back, but if but we're gonna have. I wanted it to be. Uh, why now them in in defensive mid? Uh, why now them defensive mid? Thiago and who's our and Who? Jones? Yeah, I'd put Curtis. Mm. Jones has Curtis a good is... The thing with no. Jones is crazy how we're like using him. It's like he he plays a few games in a row and then he never plays. And then he he's good though. Why are you guys using him more? Oh, he's good. Like he 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 takes the ball well. He's no, I think Jones has to. I think Jones should start. Yeah. yeah. We have that situation. He should start. So, and then front three, I think I think it'll be the the main front three. Now Jota will not start. Salah, Firmino, and Mane. You take Mane over Jota. No, I. Th- Mane's just scored. I feel like Mane. Yeah, true. Mane has a score. goal in him. But the Jota could. No, J- let me tell you. Jota could have a, Jota. has a brace no. or a hat trick in him. No, but Jota, I think Jota, Jota starts. I think, he can score a hat trick against us. I'm not I mean, I think I saw people discussing this in the, on Redmond TV. I'm not sure if I necessarily agree, but they're like saying how like Jota maybe is not used to the front three as much. Yeah, mm. it doesn't connect as well as Firmino. Yeah, but I think I do agree that in the fact Jota I think is an impact sub. The, the sub mm-hmm. we have for impact sub, it's Jota. At the yeah. yeah, he'll like, get off the bench and score a goal. Yeah, get him off the bench, he'll score. Yeah, and I literally he's the, myself. He's the essential 68th yeah. minute sub. Yeah, so I think... Yeah, literally I, what I was thinking. Yeah, so if I think... Jota comes on in the 6th, I'm shitting myself, bro. Yeah, so I think we should just <laughs> play Firmino. I think Firmino is good linking up the play. Mm-hmm. Like, against Newcastle, for example, he did that really well. Hopefully, he'll do this. he'll do the same. Maybe get a few chances to score and possibly create some chances for us. So I think that would be the that would be the lineup. But yeah, I mean, we'll, I, I'm not sure how confident both of us are. We literally, who knows at this point? And as Liverpool fans, there's not much to be confident about. Our away form is better at home, but our record at Old Trafford is not very good. 
Mm-hmm. Old Trafford's been, and guess what? United have actually gotten an Old Trafford form going now. Like we've gotten yeah, a home so. form. But so that was the difference mm-hmm. now that there's no fan. Oh well, we played you guys with no fans, and it was yeah, no, it's been no fans for a minute. Like yeah, um, because yeah, so. a long time like with no fans and stuff, we were like at home has been shaky, but now we've gotten like a kind of thing. So that would be yeah, worth so for you who guys. Who knows what will mm-hmm. happen? But yeah, that's. I think that's basically we covered all the topics. We went a little. We went a little long. Oh, the time. final score. Oh, final oh, one score. Not, mine one nothing. Predicted it, didn't we? Mine was one nothing. One yours is one nothing. Mine is one one. Alex's was like one one as well, right? Yeah, like one one or yeah one one. Yeah, we kind of predicted it before we did the lineup, but yeah, that's yeah. Like, I think we covered everything good. we needed to cover. It was a long one because there are a lot. Well, it was of- actually like. We didn't have a lot to talk about. Well, we did talk about. We had a lot to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah there isn't there yeah. wasn't much, but whatever there is, there's a lot of things to di- dissect. But I think that's nice though. Like, it's a nice dynamic to have. You have some days like you go in depth into the few topics, or you just have a few talk or a lot of topics, and you have a different depth. So you guys are chilling. Yeah, I so like this guy. I like what you have going on. Yeah, I really like to be in here. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. Of course, yeah, we'll definitely get you on in the future, Robert. You know. Before. We were, we were supposed United to have fans. another United fan who, yeah. who, who we were supposed to have. Yes, we were. Well, I'm not going to say who's going to come on. You'll see. He'll, you said yes, she is. You said yes, she is. I said I did say yes. I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> saying his name, and I was like, but yeah, he was supposed to come on. He's in the in from. He's from the soccer universe. Mm-hmm, of uh, course, soccer universe podcast, but. He had his vaccine shot, so... Oh, he, yeah, no, the, yeah, the yeah. second dose always, like, that messed me up. Yeah, there. that <laughs> messed me up. Yeah, so, you like, he literally was texting me at 9.30 as, as, just as I woke up, I heard a bunch of text messages that he still didn't, he still wasn't going to sleep. So he was oh. Up, so like, okay. Oh, for him, for him. Yeah, so I'll definitely get him on, hopefully to laugh at him after the interview. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> yes, but... You, you, thank you for being a last minute replacement, Alex. Of course, bro. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. He was like an hour. Around. I literally texted him at like 10 o'clock. Yeah, at 10 o'clock. He came straight away. So I was literally hungover. I woke up, I checked my phone. I'm like, Josh is like, you want to join my podcast? I'll, my head is hurting. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there you go. Well, there you go. There you go. So yeah. they, I'm going to head out now. Oh, uh, watching this will. Obviously, this is on you. Like yeah. for those watching on YouTube, like the mess, like like the video, uh, comment and subscribe to the Sports Universe. If you're on the pot on the podcast form, so just subscribe to the podcast, leave a mm-hmm. comment, leave a, a five star review or whatever, and we'll see you all. Have some banter, maybe we'll reply. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we'll, we'll see you on an episode. We'll see you. On episode number twenty, this could be well, a, yeah. a benchmark episode. Twenty episodes next next week. Twenty weird. episodes since we beat Tottenham. <laughs> we're gonna play Tottenham. Twenty episodes since we've been top of the league. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, great talk, guys. Great talk. Good talk. All right, I'll see you guys. We'll, we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. <laughs>